Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to check fresh release from Special Hobby. It is made in 170 second scale and it copies shorts under and MK3 so this particular edition is named as a U-Boat Killer. And here we have four marking options as far as I can understand and this is a commercial sample so it means you'll get exactly the same stuff as what you'll see in this video review and we are going to open it and check what is actually supplied in this box and why it is so heavy for 170 second scale model. So first of all box art is quite nice here, here you can see comparison with my hand, it is relatively big. Um, box I would say for 170 second scale model and here on the side we have standard information that is made in Czech Republic on the rear there is nothing and then here we have some safety advices and also QR code for kit info page this is a top opening box and here is what we have inside so as you can see now sprues are separated into several plastic bags and we will check them one by one because as you can see these are quite large parts so it's better to be careful while checking them. So just give me a second. I need to understand why one of the box flaps decided to go wild. Okay, so okay, here we have sprues in the receivable plastic bag. So let's open it. And obviously parts are copying fuselage halves here. So first sprue, here it is. Fuselage house, which are quite large for 170 second scale. Here you can see comparison with my hand. We can zoom in a bit more. So we have here now recessed panel lines and surface of these details is a bit rough so if you would like to you can use some fine primer in order to smooth it a bit. We also have clear parts molded separately as you can see some doors are even molded separately and inside we have quite nice interior detailing and there are no guiding pins whatsoever as far as you can see we have only this special tab which will be inserted there and that's pretty much all because this is a molding pin as far as I can understand which will have to be deleted so it won't stay here and tail surface is also separate so it will be installed as a separate pieces of these parts okay next we go on with um, I would say it's more or less identical set of parts because here we have tail surfaces and also halves for the wing. Here is one set of parts and here is another one so I don't think it is necessary to show them one by one. We can check only one set and it will be more than enough. So here we have recessed panel lines again. Of course ailerons and flaps are pre-molded so you won't be able to move them. Note this really long tabs which will ensure proper position of these parts on the fuselage. It's really important because these are also quite large parts and they should be fixed properly on your model. But again inside we do not have any guiding pins so if you would like to get a proper fitment you have to be careful because there is no alignment help from the manufacturer. Okay. Next we go on with another plastic bag, so here it is, it's also a receivable plastic bag, here we have slightly different plastic, I mean color wise, and you'll see it in a second, so just give me a moment, because here we have another plastic bag for clear plastic sprue, it is also receivable, so you can store the plastic sprue there, but obviously it was done in order to avoid any possible scratches on these parts, and while I'm placing this plastic back aside you can check what parts we have here so as you can see these are all clear elements on the aircraft as you remember all um, windows are molded separately so you have to insert them one by one and this is not a mistake as you can see these are separate parts so you won't be able to insert them at once maybe there are some tricks which will help you to get the a bit more streamlined work process maybe to glue them on the masking tape and then insert it once maybe something else and the only thing which you can be sure is that masks are not included here so it will be also quite a funny process to cover all these clear sections on this model and I think it's worth 
spending extra money for some mask set because it will save you a considerable amount of time. Next we go on with this special sprue which um, packs interior parts. As you can see there are not that many of them. We have the special leather, also some walls. Um, but molding quality looks really fine so I don't have any complaints about this. And if you flip it over here it's not that much detailing. Okay. Another plastic sprue and the first thing which uh, comes to my mind is that we do not have any part numbers here so as you can see you have to use the parts map in assembly manual in order to understand which part you need here and there. Each landing gear wheel should be glued out of two holes as you can see we have guiding pins inside and there are a lot of thin parts here I'm not sure if they will be used for this particular build we'll have to check the assembly manual but molding quality looks fine I mean we can zoom in a bit more so that you can see that there is no flash no any other possible molding damage so it's just a matter of careful separating of these parts and again as usual I am saying this and do not use plastic cutters which, with such thin parts it's better to use plastic saw which will ensure the proper cut and you avoid any unnecessary damage to these parts next we have external equipment so it means bombs and also four panels and each bomb should be assembled out of several parts. I wonder if there are guiding pins. No, there are no guiding pins whatsoever. So again, you have to be careful while combining these minor parts together. And note also here this nice panel, which uh, worth spending time in order to replicate some nice weathering on this part. Even though this is 172nd scale kit, still we have a lot of details which should be copied in this model out of the box. Next we have another plastic sprue, this one again dedicated to landing gear wheels and also various machine guns here in the middle. We can even zoom in so that you can see these special parts for the cockpit and everything looks fine again. I don't see any flash, any molding damage which could be present here. Of course it will be a bit tricky to erase or cut off these uh, plastic tabs but I don't think that it's really a huge problem to consider and to talk about. And especially if you're brave enough to start such kit I don't think that it will be a problem for you. Okay next we go on with another third and the last grey plastic spruce set in a separate plastic bag. As you can see there is also a small plastic bag with resin parts. So it will be interesting to see what is actually supplied in form of resin parts. As far as you can see these are exhaust stacks. So let's open it. It's a bit tricky to remove these parts. Okay. There are four of them, one stayed in the plastic bag. Nevertheless, you get the idea. So these are nice resin parts. And I don't think that it would be possible to copy the same amount of details in plastic. So that's why Special Hobby decided to copy it in resin. And you get it out of the box as a free bonus. So it's definitely a notable upgrade to standard plastic. Next we go on with engine ports. And here, as far as you can see, these are quite neat engine copies. Of course, there is no P included as far as you can see. Just let me check it. No, there is no P, but still it should be more than enough for out-of-the-box build. Okay. Next, we go on with this grey plastic sprue with engine gondolas and also special propellers <laughs> and you can see that attachment points are right on the blades so you have to be careful and here you can notice also that we have minor amounts of flesh and this is not such a serious problem in my opinion because it's not a you know, huge amount of flesh it can be easily fixed with sharp knife but still it's worth noting and engine cooling parts they are separated into two halves with no guiding pins inside the same applies to this uh, special 
parts which are also separated into two halves so be ready to work with these elements and avoid any unnecessary gaps next we go on with interior parts these are mainly uh, cockpit four panels and also bulkheads as you can see they feature some pre-molded details so it's worth bringing them out with help of painting techniques and weathering techniques and as I said there is no PE so that's what you get out of the box and only this will be copied unless you decide to get some aftermarket upgrade and the last grey plastic sprue is dedicated to various external panels for the fuselage as you can see we also have these rear sections and everything looks fine we even have dashboard here with pre-molded dials let's zoom in a bit now you should be able to see it so here we have quite smooth surface on these parts as you can see it is gloss so here it is um, a bit more smooth than what we saw on the fuselage halves and that's really cool because um, unless I, I mean here you won't have to work with sanding paper but that might be a benchmark on what surface you should have on the whole model let's say okay and next we have this plastic bag with decals sheet so let's open it as well it comes from cartograph surprisingly so here we have all necessary decals for several marking options we even have decals for the instrument panel there are no decals for seat belts as far as you can see but still everything looks fine so it will be interesting to see what marking options are included inside so let's move to the assembly manual here it is we zoom out a bit now you should be able to see it let's close the camera so on the first page we have short history note with technical specifications and both are written in Czech and English next we continue with parts map and as you can see unused parts are shown with these red crosses so it will be easier to understand what you don't have to use on your model next we continue another page of parts map and paints chart and then assembly process starts with cockpit obviously so we assemble the front section then you install all this stuff on the floor then you assemble the middle section and also the bomb rack and as you can see then all this stuff gets combined together into two layered sub assembly then you start building uh, some parts in the fuselage halves and as you can see some parts will be depending um, their choice will depend on the marking option you choose so be careful about it and also manufacturer hints that you should paint these sections in advance obviously because this is interior it will be closed and then it will be really difficult to reach it next you install this interior sub-assembly into the fuselage half and this is a quite impressive sub-assembly in my opinion so be careful with alignment obviously it will require some trimming here and there because I mean I can say it straight I don't believe that it will go in uh, without any um, minor issues but I mean it is expectable from such large model and it's not such a difficult task just to align everything in the right way then you join another fuselage half here and next you continue by installing separate fuselage panels here and there tail fin, tail wings and rudder then you assemble wing halves together and as you remember we have this special large tabs which will ensure proper fitment and also avoid any sagging of these wings next we continue with engine gondolas and engines and of course floats are installed by drilling the wings and installing them into the place next we continue by as you can see here we have choice of um, installing bombs on the extended tracks if you would like to so they will be visible on the finished model then you assemble machine gun turrets and you install propellers here we assemble landing gear legs next we go on with another turret and various antennas and there will be plenty of stuff to install on the aircraft as you can see and that's pretty much all so 
60, 81 step to do in order to get your aircraft ready. Here we go on with first Moroccan option which comes from early or mid-1944. Another one goes from 1944, Africa. Here we continue with 1943. One more from spring, 1943. And that's pretty much all. So as I said, four Moroccan options in this kit. Here on the last page you can see other models in the same scale and some of them were reviewed on our YouTube channel so we can easily find videos on our YouTube channel. As for this kit, it should be already available. You can get it on special hobby website if you would like to. And of course I will be happy to hear your opinion about this kit here in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye!